For the seventh session of the conference, I would like to invite Dr. Sinan Boskurt and the chairperson, Associate Professor Dr. Ufuk Özda. It's a pleasure to be chairing this session on retranslations of Shakespeare. Shakespeare plays have been translated into some 80 languages. Listening to Professor Halman this morning, I realized once again that Shakespeare translations are not purely a technical change in language but they require that the translator duplicates the author's process of artistic creation, grasp the spirit of the original, find the most appropriate expression of his own thought, feeling, and experience, and reproduce fully and correctly the content and form of the original. Such a creative, artistic translation is necessary for Shakespeare's texts. The translators are constantly faced with the problem of how to treat the cultural aspects implicit in Shakespeare's texts, in the source text, as translators say, and of finding the most appropriate technique of successfully conveying these aspects in the Turkish language. It's a pleasure to introduce in this session uh, Dr. Sinan Sanjaktaroğlu Bozkurt, and she will talk on retranslations of Shakespeare. Uh, by the way, Dr. Bozkurt's uh, MA thesis is on cross-temporal factors in Shakespeare's drama. Dr. Boskurt received her BA and MA in the Department of Translation and Interpretation at Hacettepe University. She earned her PhD on cultural studies in the Department of English Language and Literature at Hacettepe University. Dr. Boskurt is currently a lecturer at the Department of Translation and Interpretation at Hacettepe University. She's also a professional literary translator 
Her fields of study include feminist translation, post-colonial translation, and sociological and cultural turn in translation studies. Dr. Boskurt. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Department of English Language and Literature for her organizing such a fruitful conference and giving me the opportunity to deliver a presentation. The focus of my presentation is the retranslations of Shakespeare's drama, uh, particularly the three major Turkish retranslations of Shakespeare's early comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, to this end, I would like to start my presentation by explaining the concept of retranslation as a frequently occurred phenomenon. The term retranslation briefly refers to new translations of earlier translated texts. All kinds of texts, are, uh, including popular fiction and uh, or technical texts, such as brochures, instructions, are retranslated. However, uh, the genres which have been massively retranslated are sacred texts and canonical literary works. According to the early theories, retranslations are occurred either because of the aging of the previous translations or the wish to reach a perfect translation. The change in language is precise, precisely one of the reasons a translate, retranslation is undertaken. As cultures continuously change, every generation may take a different view on what is good or what is functional. As a result, existing translation or translations do not meet the new or altered requirements of the receiving culture. And the receiving culture may demand the creation of a new translation, in other words, a retranslation. In addition, retranslations are also closely related with the changing ideologies and linguistic, literary, cultural, and of course, translational norms. Since language, poetics, and the notions of approved translational behavior evolve over time. As a result, the translation is thought to have aged or is um, unacceptable because it no longer conforms the current ways of thinking or behaving. Apart from the retranslation theory focusing on the aging of translations, some theoreticians argue that retranslations are ne needed in order to reach a perfect translation. Um, as mentioned above, although technical texts and popular fiction, uh, we can remember, for example, Harry Potter series, are also retranslated, retranslation is mostly related to canonical literary texts. Since it is believed that great translations of these texts are so few, Retranslations exist. In other words, retranslations are regarded as a way of an improvement on the previous translations. It is believed that retranslating the text, the translator can make use of the knowledge of earlier translations, evaluations of those translations, and of the critical reception of the work. Theorists have explained the nature of such an improvement. Uh, for example, Antoine Berman, uh, Ben Simon, and more recent theorists such as Chesterman and Kosnikan have suggested that first translations are more target-oriented since their main aim is to make the target audience become acquainted with the uh, text, while subsequent retranslations are expected to be more source-oriented. Berman, for example, has stated that, quote, uh, in order to arrive at a great or canonical translation, a series of stages is played out by retranslations. First, there is a courageous introduction without literary pretensions, usually for those studying the work. Then comes the time for the first translations with literary ambition. They are generally not complete translations and, as is well known, full of flaws. Then come the retranslations or many retranslations. Eventually, a canonical translation may be produced, which will stop the cycle of retranslations for a long, t long time." Unquote. Ben Simon had, has also explained why earlier translations tend to be target-oriented and later translations source-oriented. And he has suggested that this is because initially a culture is often reluctant to embrace a text which is uh, foreign to it. So in order for the foreign text to be accepted into the new cultural sphere, it has to be adapted to the target culture. Later on, since the text has already been introduced, 
it is really no longer foreign, and translations can return to the original and be more source-oriented. However, some of the recent theorists have criticized the early retranslation hypothesis. First of all, it is mostly mentioned that retranslations do not always occur in a different time period. Instead, uh, more than one translation can be undertaken during one time period. And this situation can reflect the change in norms and ideologies by different initiators. Uh, for example, Susam Sarayeva, who points out, out that retranslations may come about within a very short time span, argues that retranslation is not necessarily connected to the canonical status of the text, nor to the aging of a translation, or to the adaptive or literal nature of the translation. Rather, the reasons for retranslation must be sought in the target culture. Um, I think although aging of translations is an important factor in retranslations, the historical period experienced by the receiving culture is much more important, since different time periods suggest different ideologies and different norms. However, I also believe that theater retranslation is also different from retranslations of novel or poetry because of many different reasons. As um, Anderman has stated, unlike a novel or a poem, the duality is inherent in the art of theater since drama is weaved both a literary text and a work of visual arts. Thus, the theater translation differs from literary translation both in the requirements it has to meet and in relation the text has with its audience. Um, first of all, there are more than one target group in drama the audience, the armchair reader, the players, and of course the director. Secondly, there are two different texts in a dramatic text, dialogue and stage directions. Thirdly, the dramatic text is incomplete unless it is performed, which presents two other elements, performability and speakability. In addition to duality problem, there should be interaction between the audience and the players who perform the play. As for retranslations of drama, translations of drama get older more quickly when compared to translations of novel or poem, uh, probably because dramatic text is fully composed of dialogues and is performed for the contemporary audience. Although the Dutch publisher Mark Peters claims that after 50 years, a translation can be considered obsolete, the time span for translation of drama is much shorter. Besnet argues that the period for the aging of text expires sooner in drama translation than in many other type of text. It is commonly held that plays require retranslating at regular intervals, usually every 20 years or so. Uh, one explanation to this assumption can be related to the spoken language inherent in theater plays. It does seem that spoken language ages at a faster rate than written language, and since the play is essentially a transcript to be spoken, it follows that the aging process will be more marked in a play um, translation than in other types of written text. Another explanation for this assumption can be related to the incompleteness of dramatic text and the interaction between the audience and the players. As Marta Matteo suggests in her article on translation strategies and the reception of drama performances, due to the close communication between addresser and the addressee in theater, plays are usually, usually subject to alterations so as to fit the established theatrical conventions and cultural expectations of the target audience. These assumptions can explain why there are often several translations of the same play, as every generation would ideally require a new translation with which to share a new experience. Thus, <coughs> retranslation of a Midsummer Night's Dream should be interpreted according to different contexts, requirements of drama, social agents of translations, norms, and personal choices. As checked in Turkish National Library, it is seen that uh, there are 1,009 entries for Shakespeare, which include source texts, translations, retranslations, booklets, posters, and critical texts on Shakespeare's plays and sonnets. As for retranslations of Emmet Summer Night's Dream, although there are almost 40 entries, when we exclude the uh, posters and reprints and uh, interlingual adaptations for children's literature, there remain seven retranslations of the play. Some of them were retranslated 50 years ago, uh, although there are retranslations which almost belong to the same time